one run well. I'm going to jump into this. We touched on it last night. That is the Eagles, the NFL, because it's bigger than the Eagles and the NFL at this point. And I'm going to read you part of a piece in Politico of all places, which demonstrates that this was a complete setup by the ownership and the team members of the Philadelphia Eagles. The owner of the Philadelphia Eagles, his name is Lori. He's a kook and a radical leftist. The idiot mayor of Philadelphia is a kook and a radical leftist. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm a fan of the Eagles, but tonight less so. I also happen to know there's some players on that team who don't want to get involved in all this, who are patriotic men, but they're in the minority in terms of numbers. And I heard a gentleman on... uh, Cable, who said, look, most of the league is black, and this is the way they feel about Trump. Now, perhaps that's a stereotype. I don't know. But you see this issue of race and this issue of progressivism have now bled into the NFL because this is what the left does. They destroy everything. And they will destroy the National Football League. There are not only other leagues out there, but people can watch college football. They can watch high school football. There's a whole new genre of sports out there called eSports that I've been watching. My son Chase turned me on to that. And that could well be the future. It's not the politicization of football. It is if I may coin a word, the progressivization of football. And so now, freedom is defined through race and egalitarianism and all the other issues that the progressives use in the rest of society and the culture. So those of you who who turn on football as a break from all the rest, as a break from the news, as a break from politics... You just want to get lost in the game? Well, you can't anymore. These players and their union are self-destructive. And what the Eagles, management, and players tried to do to this president, sabotage this event, is a disgrace. Is a disgrace. And now LeBron James and Steph Curry and this guy Steve Kerr We're not coming to the White House. You know, I don't think the President of the United States should invite any more professional teams to the White House. He can invite college teams, high school teams. The White House belongs to all of us. Not to LeBron James, even though he thinks he owns everything on the court. He doesn't own everything. Or Steph Curry. Or Steve Kerr. All of them obviously have been heavily, heavily... uh, victimized by our society. Now, according to Politico, Annie Carney and Christopher Caldago, the Philadelphia Eagles have treated the White House very unfairly. That's how the bungled celebration for the underdog Super Bowl champions abruptly canceled by the president Monday night, less than 20, they like their run-on sentences, less than 24 hours before the Rose Garden event was set to take place, is being portrayed by staffers in the West Wing. Last week, the Eagles submitted 81 names of players who were planning to visit the White House. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said in a statement, The team was full steam ahead, another administration official said, for an event that had been in the works since February. But on Monday, yesterday, the White House was informed that the delegation had been reduced to just two or three players, the owner and the team's beloved mascot, Swoop. So, of course, the president canceled it. This is complete and utter disrespect for the institution of the presidency. They would never have done this Barack Obama. Hell, they never did it to Bill Clinton, despite the fact that he was a predator. Let me, let me explain how these guys and their owners, not all the owners, by the way, I know some of them, 
who are actually quite solid. But Lurie is not one of them. So some of the owners and most of the players live in a bubble. Millions and millions of, of take this as an absolute affront. We don't care if they protest anywhere else on any other song. But the national anthem is the national anthem for a reason. When the national anthem is played in other countries by military bands or military orchestras, when it's played in other countries, when the President of the United States is there, the vast majority of us are proud. And we stand and we put our hand over our heart. And we get a tingling feeling, not up our leg, but down our spine. Why is that? Because we love the United States military, the fact that there are men and women who are putting their lives on the line to protect us. We love our country. We are not malcontents, the vast majority of us, or we wouldn't be here. And we also know that a country is defined by its people. So when we have elitists, whether they be college professors, whether they be senior officials in the Democrat Party, whether they be hosts, so-called journalists on cable TV, or whether they be football players and owners who cannot get their act together. It is an attack on us, we the people. National anthem isn't the national anthem that's just there. It's not like a tree or a puddle of water. It's not a thing of nature. It's something we as a country put together. It's something as we as a country unite behind. And so when you have these forces that seek to divide us and to use the national anthem to do so, it is unacceptable. When they use the national anthem for political purposes to advance, let me, let me change that. Conservatives do not use the national anthem for political purposes. They don't get on their knee. They never did when Obama was president. They never did. It's inappropriate. These players have been told time and time again that it is offensive to men and women in the military, active duty. It is offensive to our veterans, the vast majority. It's offensive to their families. It is offensive to most of the fans, and they don't care. They don't care. And for them, it's you can't tell us what to do. We don't live on a plantation. You can't tell us what to do. We have sp free speech rights, too. This has nothing to do with free speech rights under the First Amendment. The government's not involved. The government doesn't own the NFL. These teams are owned by individuals or companies. They are not owned by the government. The government's not interfering. So these aren't free speech rights any more than you in your workplace have a right to demonstrate for social justice against the police or whatever the cause celeb is of a given day. The Philadelphia Eagles are destroying their brand. Millions of Americans who do not live in Philadelphia were rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles to defeat the Patriots. Not all, of course, but my point is that they were attracting even a wider audience than, the, than in the city. They were the underdogs, and they won. Now they've taken sides. Now they brought progressivism, not politics. Progressivism. Onto the football field. Leftism. Social justice. And in every walk of life, now we're supposed to embrace progressivism. In every walk of life, we're supposed to accept that America is at its heart and in its soul a racist society. In every walk of life, we have to accept the fact that there's inequality in this country. Well, of course there is. The issue is whether there's inequality under justice, not whether there's inequality, period. You want absolute equality or the closest thing you can get, you ought to move to North Korea. And, of course, the players ought to give up their salaries. And same with the sportscasters who cover them. I am sick and tired of being lectured by these players, by certain owners, by sportscasters, 
I am sick and tired of them telling us you have to put your patriotism aside, your love of country aside, and just understand what these men on the field are trying to do. I understand what they're trying to do. They're destroying the game. They're besmirching the national anthem. And they're trashing our country. That's exactly right. There are some people who put their lives on their line for this country. And then there are those who make millions and millions of dollars and put their knees on the ground to protest whatever it is they're protesting. No respect for the American people. None. You talk about egomaniacs. You talk about narcissists. You're talking about LeBron James. You're talking about Steve Curry. Or Steph Curry. You're talking about Steve Kerr. They need to pop up, you see, and say, well, no, no we don't agree with this. Who gives a crap? Who cares? It's truly appalling. Absolutely appalling. And the little bubble in the sports world, they don't get it. This is about, I don't know. What social injustice is it? Do they even agree on what social injustice they're talking about? No, they don't. And Kaepernick, attacking the cops. This may come as a shock to the elitists in Washington, D.C., in Manhattan, in Los Angeles. We like the cops. The American people like our police officers. We need our police officers. We want our police officers. Everybody doesn't hate the cops. Everybody doesn't think the cops are racist. Well, Mark, that's because you've never been stopped. Of course I've been stopped. I don't know of any American who hasn't been stopped. And every time I've been stopped, two or three times for speeding when I was a teenager and a young adult, they were right and I was wrong. They were right and I was wrong. Does that mean they're always right? No. But just as you don't stereotype about a race, a religion, a sex, you don't stereotype the cops either. But the truth is, you want to keep protesting during the national anthem? You want to keep protesting during the national anthem that you could take your union, your football, and your football field, and shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Mud Lovin. If the football players in their union and some of their owner force Americans to choose between their country and the local football team, they're going to pick their country. I don't think this union and these players and some of these owners understand that there is a sleeping giant out there called the American people. And the more you poke us in the eye, the more you rub our nose in your progressive ideology, the more we're going to respond. You will not get any sympathy from us. And I feel bad for some of the owners who've tried to reach this, this policy to try and accommodate the players without offending the American people. But the players won't allow it. The players won't allow it. If football players think that their uniforms and their helmets and their pads and all the rest make them different from radicals of the 1960s, Or radicals today. They're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. Just because they play football and dress differently, just because they have the career that they have, doesn't mean they don't offend millions and millions of Americans. Oh, they offend us all right. They offend us big time. We don't like being lectured by egomaniacal narcissists 
who've been treated like kings their entire college careers and their football careers. We don't like being talked down to. We don't like being lectured. We know patriotism and we know this country. And we know how magnificent this place is. You've got some problems with it? Then go deal with it. You want to be a social justice warrior? Then go ahead. There's a time and place for everything. And you've picked the wrong time and you picked the wrong place. You've decided to hijack your sport, undermine your league, undermine the sensible owners, and rub the American people's face in it. Not politics, ladies and gentlemen. Progressivism. There's not a single conservative on that football field who's taking a knee. They're all leftists. They're all liberals. They're all social justice warriors. Because America sucks, you see. Now this union put out a statement saying NFL players love their country, support our troops, give back to their communities, and strive to make America a better place. And uh, who cares? That's called citizenship. Who cares? But that's not the point. The point is what they're doing is unacceptable. What they're doing is unacceptable. And I would argue most of them or many of them don't love the country. Otherwise, why take a knee at the national anthem? Which is a a display, a celebration of the country. If they love the country, then why do they purposely, purposely protest during the national anthem? It's like Obama fundamentally transforming America while he loves the country. We're not buying it. We're not stupid. I'll be right back. Yeah. 